welcome everyone. Welcome to the very first session. Um, this is a talk about testing Eclipse plugins. Um, I'm Lorenzo Bettini, I'm a professor at the University of Florence. And this is a joint talk with uh, Vincenzo Caselli and uh, Francesco Guidieri from RCP Vision, a company located in Florence working on Eclipse technologies. Uh, what we would like to show in this talk is we would like to share some experiences and some tips and tricks on testing the Eclipse plugins. In particular, I will focus on trying to avoid to use a running Eclipse instance while testing. And we wait just a few more seconds. Good morning. Good morning. So I, I've just started, so this is the very first slide. Uh, so we would like to share some experiences and some tips and tricks uh, when we test Eclipse plugins. In particular, I will focus on trying to avoid to use a running Eclipse instance and try to use plain JUnit tests as much as possible. Then, when we uh, really need uh, a functional testing framework, uh, I will show some let, let's say some don'ts that you shouldn't do when you use a functional testing framework and trying to focus on testing the real behavior of your plugins. So the main case study, the main use case in this talk will be our uh, Eclipse project, EMF Partly, which is a project to easily build uh, UI uh, or applications based on EMF uh, model. And this framework uh, comes with some uh, defaults, but you can customize everything uh, using dependency injection. We also have uh, a DSL, an XX DSL, to specify customizations. Uh, now I'm going to do a very quick demo just to show you uh, what we need to test uh, when developing Parsley. And if you're interested in uh, the DSL, you can come to uh, this afternoon talk at the uh, Express Summit. So, uh, Parsley provides some uh, UI, some uh, JFace and SWT components that you should use for your EMF models. Uh, we provide trees, forms, dialogue, editors, and combinations of them. And we provide some project wizards to get started. And as I said, we uh, provide some defaults for uh, the models, but you can customize everything. So, uh, let's come to the quick demo. So, um, as I said, we provide some wizards, some project wizards to get started. Um, as usual, you specify the name. Uh, we also ship um, a version of Parsley which works with RAP. So in the wizard, you can already set up your project to be used in, with single sourcing techniques, both with RCP applications and RAP applications. And we provide some uh, templates to get started. So as I said, we provide three forms, combinations. Um, I'll just use one, uh, it's not important to so, uh, the, as I said, this is um, the DSL, which comes with Parsley. We provide uh, navigations to uh, Java types, and we also uh, generate the plugin XMLs from these, um, from these files. Um, uh, for, the, for this very quick demo, I will import um, an example, which ships with Parsley. So this is a complete application based on the standard EMF library example. So the library examples that you should know if you're familiar with EMF. Uh, you can specify all the customizations uh, with the DSL. As I said, if you're interested in the DSL, you can come to the, this afternoon talk. And we have a, a very compact syntax for specifying customizations of all the features of, uh, of the UI parts. And we also generate the plugin XML for you because you define the parts right here in the DSL. So from a single compact input file, we generate lots and lots of Java uh, artifacts and we also generate the plugin XML for you. Uh, 
just to show you what you get in the end so I'm, I'm running another instance uh, you, you get a, a tree with a form in this in this example and when clicking on uh, any, uh, an object on the tree uh, we provide a, a form representation for, for the object you can specify custom uh, context menus we provide undo and redo for you uh, as I said I, I'm not going into the details of the DSL but everything is specified in a very compact form um, we provide dialogues and everything is uh, automatically built by Parsley from uh, reflectively from the EMF model or if you have customizations we will use your customizations um, so this is just to say that uh, when developing Parsley we have to uh, test many things okay and most of the things we have to test are somehow related to the UI to JPEGs control, to SWC control, or to Eclipse elements. Mm -hmm. But to test uh, most of these things, do we really need a running Eclipse instance? Do we really need a functional testing frameworks? Well, at the beginning, when we started uh, implementing Parsley, we were testing uh, almost everything with, with SWC box. Are you familiar with SWC box? It's, it's, it's a functional framework anyway. It's a functional testing framework. That was okay because we were able to, to test all the behavior, but it, it took us a lot of time both for writing uh, a single test and most of all, it took a lot of time for executing the test. So if you're familiar with functional testing framework, you know that it takes some time to run even a single test. So uh, we tried uh, to improve uh, this testing approach and of course the first thing you have to do is to split the core parts from the UI parts but uh, especially in Parsley most of the things were related to, you, to the UI so we really need to test UI components we tried to avoid SWT bot uh, as much as we could by uh, writing programmatically uh, plugin JUnit text, and but that didn't actually uh, solve the, the problems. I mean, the the, the problem of running uh, such test was not due to SWT bot. So I have nothing against SWT bot, and I'm a committer of SWT bot. So I really love that frame. So I'm not blaming uh, SWT bot for this. Uh, the the real problem, the the the, the fact that it took some time, it was due to running Eclipse for the test, okay? So we, we try to avoid this. So let's take an example. Uh, mm, so you saw that in Parsley, uh, we have uh, a factory that creates the controls of a form or of a dialog, starting from an EMF object and depending on the feature that you want to represent. So for instance, given an object and given a boolean feature, a boolean field, we want to uh, show a checkbox or uh, for a string field we want to show a text field or for a reference we want to show a combo so we need to test this factory and uh, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't show that in the demo but all these components are uh, automatically bound to, to the object so we automatically set up the data binding for you so if you change something in, in the form, that change is reflected automatically in the model and vice versa. If someone else changes the model, the form is automatically uh, updated. So we set up EMF data binding. So we, we have a few things to test for only for this control factory. And if we want to test this scenario, including the EMF data binding, <coughs> in the end, all that we need is a JPEG control is an EMF model, a display, an, an, an SWT display, and uh, the so-called data binding realm. This is something related to data binding, so it's something uh, related to Eclipse API. But to test this, we don't need a, a running Eclipse instance. We can do without. So let, let's see how we can achieve this. 
the first thing we do, uh, we write uh, a JUnit uh, test rule. Do you, do you know what a test rule is in JUnit? Okay. So we can write a custom uh, test rule that set up uh, a display, an SWT display and an SWT shell. We uh, got inspired by this blog post and if you have time, you should really have a look at this uh, blog, Kodak, Kodak Fine, Kodak Fine, I, I don't know how to, to pronounce that, because there are so many uh, nice tips and tricks to test uh, Eclipse plugins or JFace elements. So we set up the display in this, in this test rule. Uh, the apply method is standard in, uh, when, when you implement a JUnit uh, rule, so that, that's nothing specific. The important thing is that we provide a display in the shell. So this test rule basically creates a, a display in the shell for you that you can use in your tests. We also implement a few uh, utility methods like flash pending events. So if you have to test something that, <laughs> let's say, have, has uh, an event listener, and that event listener runs something asynchronously in the UI thread, then you need something to, to flash all the events. Otherwise, the tests are not deterministic. So just calling this method flashes all the pending events. And that, that's useful when you have asynchronous operations to test. Uh, you need, uh, if like us, you need to uh, a data binding wheel. Uh, there's uh, a nice uh, page hidden in the Eclipse wiki, like basically everything in the wiki, uh, that shows you how to uh, write a test, uh, uh, a real that you can use in your test. Mm -hmm. So you can just copy and paste this from uh, the wiki once you are aware of the, its existence. So having all these things, we can write some other utility methods that uh, allows you to uh, execute basically a lambda inside the UI thread. You get the display from the JUnit rule. So just by writing this, you can just simply call sync exec with the lambda or uh, with an anonymous class and that, uh, that behavior will be executed in the UI thread either synchronously or asynchronously if you want but in the test you will run basically everything synchronously and once you have this you can easily write some other utility methods that for instance given an SWT control uh, test that uh, that control is a button is a checkbox actually and that the checkbox is a uh, checked or not depending on your test. Similarly you can test that a control is a label with a given string or uh, given a control you can test it's a combo box with uh, uh, some expected elements or uh, um, well you, you can basically test all the controls. Then uh, in, in these examples we will use a, extend. Uh, are you familiar with extend? Okay, for those who are not familiar, it's a DSL, it's a Java DSL uh, implemented in Xtext, which is a kind of more readable Java, but it's completely interoperable with the Java type system. So it's really readable, even if you're not familiar with Xtend, you, you will have no problem in following the examples. And Xtend allows you to write very readable code, especially in, when you write tests. There's also uh, a nice talk in uh, EclipseCon Europe 2014 given by Boris, which show, shows you how to easily write a readable test with test with extend. So these are a few uh, test examples. So uh, we uh, create uh, an EMF object. We pass uh, the feature, a Boolean feature of this object to our factory which should create a control. Then we check with that method I showed you before that that control is actually a checkbox and that at the beginning is not checked. Then we change the model, we change the, the feature of the model to true 
and we check that the checkbox is now checked. So we test both that the control factory correctly creates a checkbox for a Boolean feature, but we also test that the data binding works. Okay? Of course, we can easily do also the other tests, so we change the checkbox and we test that the model is updated. Something similar if the, Boolean, if, if the feature is read-only, read we want to make sure that uh, the control is not enabled. So in this way, we can easily write many, uh, we can easily test the whole behavior of our form control factory. And let me stress that these are plain JUnit tests. So in this case, only a display is needed. There's no running Eclipse instance. So we follow these strategies, uh, this strategy to test all the core UI components, all the core UI classes of EMF parsling. With this approach, uh, we have a JUnit test case for each uh, core UI uh, parsling class, and we can easily cover 100% of that class. Okay. Well, of course, code coverage is 100% uh, code coverage doesn't mean that everything works, but for sure is a, a good starting point. And these tests are really easy to write, you saw that. They are very readable, and of course, since they are plain JUnit tests, they run amazingly fast. So just to give you an example, we, it only takes less than 14 seconds to execute uh, around 600 tests, because again, these are plain JUnit tests. Try to do that with SWT bot. And if you're familiar with the functional testing framework, you know that we're not talking about seconds, we talk about minutes, even more. So just uh, less than 14 seconds. To test at least the core behavior, but that core behavior still deals with the UI. Uh, another example, uh, you, you, you saw that we create a tree viewer given a, a new object. We want to, we automatically set up the content provider and the label provider, and we want to test that the tree, uh, given a, an, an ED object, has a, an expected structure. And we also want to test that the, if the model changes, the tree is automatically updated. Again, we don't need Eclipse for testing this. Uh, we, we create a string representation of the tree using indentation to show the children and, just, and then we just compare the expected uh, string representation with, uh, with the actual one. And again, we can change the model and uh, check that the, the tree is updated. Again, this is uh, the JUnit test. So again, it's, it's an extend. Extend allows you to write uh, multi-line strings, so it's, it's really readable. Uh, we create, a, we set up a tree viewer given uh, a, an, an EMF object, and we make sure that the structure of the tree is as expected. So there's a root, and there there are two children. We change the we change the model, and we do that uh, also flashing all the pending events because the tree is updated asynchronously. And then we make sure that the element is updated in the tree. Again, this is plain JUnit. No need to run Eclipse. Again, this is fast. We have similar tests for uh, table viewers, context menu, listeners. And in some cases, we also use modern <coughs> frameworks like Mokito, which is really useful when you have to test listeners or events, especially if you have drag and drop. We, we have drag and drop in, in our viewers. And you should know that uh, especially testing or debugging drag and drop is a real pain in you know web. Okay? So all these things uh, you could do that yourself. Mm -hmm. But we have already implemented that uh, all these things in partly. We use that internally for our project, but we also release uh, a feature with all these classes. Uh, again, it's still under development and we use it internally. It's not a public API, so if you want to try that, please do that, but um, expect some API breakings in the future. 
just another few, just a few other examples for testing. So you saw that we have a DSL, so we have uh, a builder, an Eclipse builder. If you want to test uh, the project builder, the Eclipse builder, you don't need a functional testing framework, but in this case, you really need uh, Eclipse, okay? So in this case, you really need to write a JUnit plugin test, but you can do without a, testing, a functional testing framework. Uh, you have to know a few Eclipse API for uh, programmatically creating projects, uh, creating resources programmatically, wait for the builder to finish the building, and use the Eclipse API to assert some error marker. You can do that. You can do all of these programmatically. In this case, I would suggest you to start from existing uh, implementations and of utility methods for testing all these things. Uh, Xtext um, provides you with, um, with an Eclipse feature. Uh, oh, the, the, the qualified name is UI.Xtext.UITesting. And it provides many utility classes to create all these things programmatically. So you have uh, a project factory, a, a plugin project factory, you have methods for waiting for the automatic building to finish, Create, creating Java projects programmatically, copying files in the workspace programmatically. Uh, by using the Eclipse API, you can, um, well, not easily, but you can uh, retrieve all the error markers that your builder may have created. Once you have the markers, you can uh, check and assert that there are no error markers in some cases and that there are the expected errors when you use uh, a project with some error. Again, this is, an, this is extend and you can simply copy and paste this in, in your uh, test. You can even, you can even test uh, a wizard without using a functional testing framework. In this case, it's a little bit more complicated, but once you know how to do that, it's easy. So you don't have to go through all of this, but uh, this is a, a reusable uh, method that you can simply pass your wizard and this method will do all, all the things for you. And in this case, for instance, you can pass your wizard and check that the wizard creates the project in the workspace with the expected structures and wait for the building and check that there are no errors. Of course, at, at some point, you also need a functional testing framework. So, but you can use only to test the actual functional behavior of your application. And there are many of them. But in this case, uh, I want to share a few uh, don'ts that you shouldn't do when you write functional testing framework. And these are based on this presentation that we gave last year at the FlixCon. <coughs> So if you're familiar with SWT bot, you know that uh, usually when you write uh, SWT bot test, you should close the welcome view in Eclipse because that might get in your way. The problem is that this view is not always present. And by always, I mean that if you run the test in Eclipse, it might be present. If you run the test in Ma with, with Maven title, it might not be present. So usually uh, I see this code uh, in, in SWT bot tests that try to get the welcome view by using SWT uh, view by title. And of course, uh, they have to wait. If, if the view is present, it's closed. But it's, if it's not present, you have to catch the widget, widget not found exception. And this steals some time from your test, because especially if the, the welcome view is not there. Uh, this is actually a mistake because you're trying to test whether a user is able to close the welcome view and that's not part of your testing, okay? It's welcome view is, is not your business. It's not part of testing your uh, software uh, features. If you want to close that, do it programmatically. Iterate over the views and if the welcome view is there, you close that. That's faster. If it's not there, you don't have to wait too much time. Similarly, if your plugin needs the Java perspective, 
you may want to try to open the Java perspective simulating the, 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 the operations of the user. Don't do that because that's not your business. Your plugin has nothing to do with the Java perspective. It only needs the Java perspective, but you don't have to test that the user is able to open that. So don't do that by simulating the actions of the user. Do that programmatically again. You have the API from the uh, Eclipse uh, workbench, so you can easily close the welcome view using the API. In that case, your functional tests will be faster and will be more readable because they won't have to deal with uh, something that's not part of your plugin. And just to give you a few comparisons, you saw that we uh, only it only takes less than 14 seconds for uh, 600 uh, tests, plain JUnit tests. Then we have a suite of SWT bot tests, uh, uh, around 100 tests, and you saw it takes much longer. So it's four minutes for 100 tests against uh, 14 seconds for uh, uh, 600 tests. And of course, you have to do this only uh, nicely or uh, only in the CI uh, integration system. While for this test, it doesn't take that much to run them at each modification. OK, uh, just another thing, uh, especially for those plain JUnit tests, we actually use the Maven Surefire plugin instead of Typo. <coughs> Surefire plugin because if you use type of Surefire plugin, even if you say don't show the UI, you're still using an OS GI framework. It takes a bit longer to start, but most of all, uh, if you use the uh, type of Surefire plugin, since it use, uses an OS GI framework, uh, probably your tests will not behave exactly as in Eclipse. So if you want to be sure that you're using exactly the same context, you can use the Maven Surefire plugin. In that case, it, they should behave exactly as they behave in Eclipse. So um, as conclusion, well, try to use plain JUnit tests as much as you can. It might take some time to learn how to do that, but once you learn that, then your development will surely be faster. And I'm not only talking about the time it takes for the test. It's, it's even easier to write a, a test case. And of course, you need plug-in JUnit tests for uh, testing things that have to deal with Eclipse. And when you use functional testing, try to test only your behavior. OK, uh, so please. Remember to evaluate the session, and there are any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Can you access to the slide? Is it possible to have access to the slide? Yes. And all, all these examples are part of uh, Parsley Git source code. We have experience in testing these four applications, and if this uh, maybe the uh, architecture is a bit more modular, so uh, you don't have to start up as much things as uh, if you're testing like an uh, EV framework. I don't. I personally don't have experience with that, but for sure I know that E4 should be already uh, prepared to to mock as much as possible and so it, it should be easier in that case. In these very examples you saw that uh, all the plain JUnit tests actually deal with the uh, JFace controls. So probably in that case you could gain uh, more time when you have to test, uh, when you have to write plugin JUnit tests. But for the Plain JUnit tests, I think it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. Do you have a, a way to, to have a, a light workbench or something when you may need to have some functionality of the workbench? I think about the job 
maybe, uh, which can block using, uh, which can prevent using a plain gene test. Uh, you mean try to reduce the uh, uh, target so platform of the running Eclipse? Uh, maybe not running the platform, using plain gene unit test, but uh, still um, allowing to use uh, some functionality of the workbench, like uh, jobs. Well, I, I think in that case, uh, in that case you could uh, write a plugin in unit test that runs Eclipse headlessly without the UI, but you still need uh, the, the core platform. Yeah, th there are some cases where you can do without uh, running uh, eclipse.ui.ide uh, or uh, eclipse.sdk and you can use the headless uh, mode. But you still need the, the, the core platform for that. And it, it still takes some time to, to start the core platform. Other questions? Thank you again.